How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review, and it, it is a little bit of uh, goatee time. Hopefully goatee time. In the form of um, the North Brewing's Goat, Russian Imperial Stout. Um, I've done quite a few um, North Brewery beers before. Um, I posted probably about half of them, and I actually uh, had an issue with my camera to where... Um, um, I had a bunch kind of on file and I lost my hard drive. Such is life. But, um, yeah. It's been a while since I posted one. And I actually went on a road trip this weekend and went up there. Picked up this. This is nothing crazy from them. This is an adjunct at, adjunct out. This is a base Russian Imperial Stout. So I'm super excited to give it a whirl. See what she's all about. As far as what it says in the bottle itself. It says, The Goat uh, Russian Imperial Stout February 2016. This being June 2017, it is not a bit over a, a bit old, a year old, I should say. Um, it's actually a misprint. They had labels from last year, they use it for this year, so it's a couple months old. So that was kind of a bummer. I actually picked it up off the shelf going, getting all excited and shit. Such is life. 10.7% uh, alcohol by volume. Who knows if that's true, too? Um, you know, the North Brewing Company, Endicott, New York, just west of uh, Binghamton. And that's that. Label wise, it's fucking awesome. You got these nice kind of crosses over here. A little bit kind of creepy, kind of sketched out little uh, goat mask wearing fella right there. And there we go. So let's give this a proper pour, or not so proper pour. Not a big hiss on that sucker. And uh, see what she's got. You're talking about a Russian Imperial Stout. Base Russian Imperial Stout that's not super old, that does not look like it's going to have any carbonation whatsoever is not a good sign so we'll see what happens here um so yeah um what is there is it about a micron of the pinky finger of a head malted malt ball in color actually more than kind of like what i like my coffee to look like color head and she's dark so you're talking about a beer that's pouring that is not producing a gigantic head russian imperial stouts sometimes that happens but come on a little bit ahead you know Especially if it's relatively new. So, does she look like an imperial stout? Absolutely. Let's see what she smells like. Nice, rich, non-bittering chocolate malts. There's super rich red dark fruits kind of vibes in there. It's not f super bright fruitiness, more of like a muddled kind of dark fruitiness, cherries and berries and things like that. There's like this want to have coffee in it. I don't think there's coffee nose on it, but it's like the, with the roasted malts and the cherries and the, and those things going on. You want to kind of be like, okay, there's like a coffee thing going on, but that's not the case. But it gives you those vibes. And then like a semi-sweet bitter chocolate. So she definitely smells like a Russian Imperial Stout. Like high, like I like my Russian Imperial Stouts to skew. A lot of Russian Imperial Stouts tend to skew a little bit more bittering. This one tends to be a little bit more old school. So, yeah, she smells good. She looks good. Except for that head. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. It's not bad. It has all the components. Of a really nice, well done Russian Imperial Stout. I have those roasted malts in there. Nice. It's a bit more bittering than you expect based off the nose, but I'm okay with that because you get a heaping helping of this, like, kind of semi sweet chocolate. Coffee vibes, even though coffee's not in there, coffee vibes abound. But you do get a combination of staleness with. Um, with the lack of carbonation that's going on there. The carbonation is so small, so non-existent, that when you first sip it, you're like, okay, it tastes like a kind of an aged imperial stout. But you don't get any, any of those rounded robustness, um, a rounded robust kind of soft edges on everything. You get a little bit more kind of sharper edge and then you're left with a little bit of staleness kind of going on. That's, it's not super prevalent, but at the same time, it's enough to be, like, kind of a bummer when it comes to, like, 
the carbonation issue. You know, you can see that right off the bat when I popped it. There was really no carbonation whatsoever. I thought it might be sideways um, or sour or whatever you want to call it, um, but it wasn't. It just it just lacks that carbonation. If it had that carbonation, it'd be such a more better. Those are words. More better beer, and um, just make it that much more electric. Because when you have that carbonation, what you end up having is vibrance. So you're, when you actually drink it, your body's like, oh my god, carbonation, that's pretty fun. And then you have actual flavor delivery. Um, you tend to get a bit more kind of flavor um, thrown at you when it's carbonated because it's kind of carrying or you have more kind of exposure uh, to the flavors when you have carbonation going on. So it's kind of a weird one to where it's actually super tasty. Just that carbonation kind of really drums it down. It's kind of a bummer because I want to love it. So even lingering, and I haven't taken a taste for, you know, what, two minutes now? It's super vibrant. Coating, just lingering there with a pretty decent kind of flavor profile. Mm. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut the chase and talk about it. Is it one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts I've had as of late? No. Is it one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts that I've had born in the U.S. as of late, on the outside looking in. If it was carbonated, where would it fall in those two categories? Probably be closer to the front. Both of those categories. Uh, it's just carbonation kind of ruins it for me. Uh, value and availability. I think this was, you know, 14 15 bucks for a bomber. That kind of sucks. I wish it was more around 10 bucks Because it is, you know... A five milliliter. It's not a big like regular. Actually, it's not even five hundred milliliter. This is more like Aventina style size. Let me look at the size. I actually don't even know what it says on here. One point nine fluid ounces. So it's more like an Aventina size bottle. It's not like your your super bomber uh, or your bomber or your seven fifty size beer. So that's kind of a bummer. But at the same time, you know, small brewery trying to make good and just say um, availability uh, brewery only. And if you like what, will you like this? If you like Russian Imperial Stouts, if you like old school Russian Imperial Stouts, um, if you like old Rasputin, if you like an Americanized Russian Imperial Stouts, probably won't float your boat. But if you're into the OGs, you'll dig this. Um, hopefully, uh, if you get a bottle that's a bit more carbonated, it might go from bottle to bottle. So I just might got to bunk one, take that for what it's worth. Uh, but if, uh, I mean, beer wise in general, it's pretty fucking fantastic. Just, uh, just that carbonation. Kind of a bummer. But such is life. Sometimes all best laid plans um, end up, whatever, wasted. However that phrase goes. Anyway, there you go. Another review in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did, didn't, anywhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram untapped. Massive beers in all four of those spaces if you want to check me out anywhere else. And, uh... Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice, deep, dark, locally made beer right now. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.